was on July 24th, uh, 1968, we flew a hoist mission into the mountains. Hoist mission is uh, where there's no place to land on the ground, we have to lower a cable down to pick up the wounded. And it was a unit that was uh, pretty much surrounded. Um, we had to make a downwind uh, approach because of where the enemy was. And I was teaching my co-pilot um, how to fly missions, and so he was at the controls, and I kept telling me how to terminate, uh, you know, short, because where the smoke was coming out of the trees was not where the smoke was coming up from the ground. So he had to, to terminate his approach above the trees before the smoke. And he was too hot on the approach, and we drifted right past the smoke, and uh, that's when all the bullets, um, you know, started coming up. First thing I noticed was a bullet in the window in front of me, right? That, that, that can freak you out. You know, did it, was that coming in or going out or what was happening? And uh, we were taking fire from our four o'clock low, you know, position because we had just overflown where the, where the enemy was. Uh, three bullets hit the back of my seat. One went out the, the window right in front of my face and uh, uh, the other one hit my door gunner in the, in the head. Um, and all the instruments were, were lighting up. We lost our hydraulic, soil pressure, oil temperature, transmission, and uh, so we had no choice except to go back to the uh, back to the base. Uh, so we weren't able to get the uh, the wounded uh, out. Um, they took my door gunner into the aid station, and uh, the rest of us got another aircraft, and we we went back out. And uh, uh, this time, rather than making an approach from from altitude, I, I went low level and came in over the tops of the trees. We came to hover uh, over the top of the unit and lowered the cable. And as we were pulling up um, uh, the first wounded guy, uh, that's when they opened up uh, again. And I remember turning my head. Uh, he was a young, you know, black kid. And, and just as the cable got him to the, to the skids and to the aircraft, uh, he got hit and blood splattered all over us in the cockpit. And, um, uh, lights were coming on again, uh, the same emergency lights, and, uh, and this time the fuel pressure gauge. Uh, so we must have, you know, taken some pretty severe hits on the bottom. So we had to leave. We only got uh, one wounded out. We had to make uh, an emergency landing with no hydraulics and uh, the, the fuel gauge going down pretty rapidly at, at, uh, at a fire base. Uh, then the um, brigade commander put a moratorium on um, missions out there. They, the ground unit was going to have to uh, either be relieved uh, on the ground or they were going to have to walk to a place where helicopters could get in because uh, uh, a gunship had also been uh, been shot down. Um, so uh, two hours later, the battalion commander for the unit that was on the ground showed up and was asking for, um, for volunteers. Um, our CO was there, our commanding officer, and he said that uh, uh, that I didn't have to go, um, but to me it made perfect sense for me to go because I, I knew exactly what the tree looked like where these guys were and anybody else. Uh, would have been hovering around and that was more dangerous. So I got to pick my crew because um, it was all volunteers. So I, I got my co-pilot from a couple of months before and medic, door gunner, and crew chief, and uh, out we went. This time we came to hover uh, over the trees. We started to lower the cable, and uh, uh, they opened up again. Um, same lights came on, um, except um, there was a new one. It's called the uh, engine chip detector, and that means that there's oil, uh, there are metal particles floating around in the oil system, and uh, if enough of them are there, and it, they hit the magnet and it closes the circuit, uh, it, it means that uh, an engine failure, it's a turbine engine, it means an engine failure is probably you know, imminent. Uh, so I had a choice, you know, stay at a hover and try to get some wounded out, and you know, run the risk of crashing on top of them, um, or, or leaving. And about that time, I was I was shot in the arm and in the chest, but I had a, I had a bulletproof vest on, so it, it just it bounced off, but it did break a rib. Um, and uh, my our new door gunner was wounded as well, so I thought probably prudent to leave. We uh, put in the power and uh, did a climbing turn to the left and. Uh, um, probably 45 seconds later, the engine quit. Um, uh, 
jungle mountain, so really no place to go. And uh, we, we started down into a low spot. And my, my logic told me that there might be water there in a the stream, maybe that'll cushion the crash, maybe it'll put out a fire, maybe it's a, you know, an avenue of escape. And uh, my, uh, my crew chief uh, said there was, a, there was a clearing at nine o'clock. And I looked over and sure enough, there was this small clearing about the size of two helicopters and uh, um, banked over to the left um, with, with no engine and uh, somehow managed to plunk it right into that one little spot and there was nothing for miles and miles. Uh, so there we were on the ground and uh, we'd gotten off an emergency uh, call so hopefully other aircraft were on the way um, and some gunships uh, showed up and they were putting fire down uh, around us about a, about 100 meters away and we could see um, you know tracers going back up. Uh, toward them, and uh, I thought, you know, wow, that, that means uh, they're getting closer. Uh, so we uh, we got our weapons out and we we got ready. And about that time, um, we saw another helicopter, uh, you know, coming instead of the gunships, and this was one of our own. Uh, uh, rescue aircraft, one of our sister ships, and they came in and uh, and, and and got us out, and um, so that was um, that was a pretty long day. And obviously, and and, uh, and with doing what the line of work that you did in Vietnam, you obviously earned several medals. You know, what was the highest that you earned? Um, Silver Star. Uh, that was the uh, um, losing three aircraft in one day, and that was that mission on 24 July uh, that I that I described. Yeah. They either have to dock me a lot of money for three helicopters or give me a medal, so I guess that was their, their decision.